Recently, I went on the road to face two of the most prominent Satanists in the entire world, black magicians, Nicholas and Zena Schreck. Zena is the daughter of Anton LaVey, founder of the Church of Satan. This debate took place in a public auditorium, and I want you to see what happened that night when we had a showdown with Satanism. I would like you, please, to prepare yourselves for the high priest and priestess of the Temple of Set, directors of the Werewolf Order and Radio Werewolf, Werewolf, the owners of the Hell House of Hollywood, and indeed, the first family of Satanism. Nicholas and Cena Shrek. Give them a hand, would you please, as they come out? <laughs> now, come on, you give them a better hand than that. Come on, give them a better hand than that. Cena, <laughs> Nicholas, give me a hand. Have a seat. Uh, both of you seem uh, rather appropriately attired in black, except the shirts. Little color tonight. Little color. <laughs> Man of color with us. Right. And you have the pentagram around your neck? That's the pentagram of set. The pentagram of set. Mm -hmm. Now, that's one of the things we're going to get into right off the bat. We're going to talk about you being high priest and high priestess. Not, and not high priest. priest. Oh, not, not high? Priest. Yeah, we have to priest clarify. Priest and priestess. Priest and priestess. Just priest and priestess? Yeah. There's no that's high or low in set? There, there is a there high. There is a high priest. <laughs> Yeah. You're, not, you're not there yet? No, that's a, that's a jump. <laughs> that's, that's quite a jump. A jump. Yes. What, do you, what, do you, what do you have to do to get all the way to the top? Well, first of all, you have to understand the Temple of Set is an initiatory academy of the left-hand path. And the basic purpose of an initiatory school of Satanism, which you could call the Temple of Set, is to evolve and to develop one's soul to become closer and closer in alignment with that being we call Set, who is the Prince of Darkness. Satan. Um, we'll get into that later, but Satan, in my view, is a rather corrupted and degraded name of something much older, much more noble. So the big monkey monk in Egyptian black magic was Set. The first, Set is one of the oldest gods known to the human race. The ancient Egyptians recognized him as the Lord of Darkness, and many of his properties are certainly comparable to that figure that Judeo-Christianity knows as Satan. But it, as we discuss this, I think we should get into the differences okay, as well. Let's lay some groundwork first in terms of uh, what you all are about. Uh, I have a little brochure here about the Hell House of Hollywood. It says on uh, the front of this, take a scarifying tour of Hollywood's haunted house of crime, horror, and the occult. And um, inside here, you are described as having rare and used books that span the spectrum of horror, occultism, crime, obscure objects of art, collector's items, curios, monster mania. It seems to me that a lot of what you do is based on fear, dread, horror. Would that be fair to say? I would say that, absolutely. That would be fair to See, say. See, yes. why are you so preoccupied with fear, dread, and horror, well, death, skulls, darkness, it's evil? It's not necessarily a preoccupation with it, but rather a being in line with it. The powers of darkness, the dark side, has always been something I've been attuned to. It's not a preoccupation. Now, you, you say you were born a Satanist. I mean, you That's feel right. that you are part of some generational supernatural lineage? Well, that's difficult to say. I do feel I was born a Satanist. I don't feel that simply by being born to a Satanist necessarily makes you a Satanist. But I do feel that they are born. So you and, have this and, natural... And to, use, to use the word Satanist, again, I would tend to feel is somewhat limiting and maybe somewhat outdated. There are more, um, more well-defined ways of What do you want to call it. yourself? A Setian? A Satanist? We call ourselves a Setians. A, a, a follower of the Dark <laughs> Prince? Uh, well, certainly not a follower. And I think this You're not is a, a follower? This, no, is that's, a good that's where, this is a good opportunity to give some facts, is that we're not followers. Um, that would imply the difference between a right-hand path 
religion as opposed to a left-hand path. Now, and let me interrupt you at a couple of points here because you, you guys talk about things that I know about that they don't know about. You use this yeah. term a lot, right-hand Le path, left-hand path. Think, I think I'm on the right, you're right. on the left, correct? Maybe before we even get into the meat of the matter, we should define a few terms. What do you mean by the left-hand path? The, let me start with the right-hand path. No. I wish you had started with the right-hand path, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> That's one. Well, that's one. And we'll get you. <laughs> we have a chalkboard here or somewhere we can keep tally. Go ahead. Um, for semantic purposes, we use the phrase right-hand path to define those religions or spiritual practices that attempt to submit to a greater force, a God, a universal principle that unites humanity together. So you put me and the Buddhists and the Hindus and the Muslims exactly, and everybody else exactly. all kind and, of in one category over here. And, and let, let me clarify. We're the right-hand path. The right-hand path would consist of, in religions you'd be familiar with, Islam is the most <coughs> radical right-hand path system. The very word means submission. Uh, it's cousins, Judaism. Just but you think they're radical, you haven't met the people who listen to me. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Almost every major world religion is dedicated to not separating one's soul and empowering it and individuating it, but submitting it to a God. And in your case, submitting to Jesus Christ. But you're not submitting? We are not no. submitting. We are not... I'll use the common phrase that I'm sure many people in this room probably consider devil worship. We do not worship the devil. We use that archetypal figure, the devil, which we prefer to define as Set, in, as his specific name is Set, as a prototype, a role model, a companion. But excuse me, excuse me. But you do believe he's literal. Yes. You do believe he's literal. As a, you mean as an entity? He is an yes. entity. He is an entity. Yes. He is an entity above all entities. And don't you kind of feel, Zena, that, that Set was given a bum rap? I mean, let's face well, it, when Moses went down to Pharaoh and said, hey, you let my people go or you are in big trouble, and got his people out of there and straightened them out to worship the true and the living God, then in fact, somebody was, must have been on a wrong mission that, because Seth... Well, that, that historic incident or mythological incident, we can't say for sure. We won't argue the fine points. Th these are the historical facts we know there was an exodus of certain foreigners in Egypt. They called themselves the Hebrews, though biblical archaeologists have seen that they may have been many groups. When they left Egypt, they were slaves, and the Pharaoh at the time was a Pharaoh who held Set to be the highest god. Okay. The theory is that... No, wait, wait a minute. The, you, you, you admit Pharaoh, Ramsey II, or whoever he was. We don't know for sure, okay, but... But that you admit that he was a, a devotee of Seth. Absolutely. Yes. And well, that now, was, wait a minute, there wait was, a minute, that wait a minute. That was not hidden at the time. The, he lost. His troops got drowned. He tried to pursue them through the Red well, Sea. That's, that's and they we, all drowned. That's God where, conquered. Well, that's the water where, turned to blood. Frogs were all over the place. Right, right, we right, won. Right. Have you forgotten this? Well... Okay, that, I, I, in deference to the fact that we are in a house of worship, I will say that is the Judeo-Christian mythology of that historical event. We don't see it that way. But it's interesting, what is interesting about the so-called exodus is that the Judaic and Christian philosophy may have really been formed there at that event. And Set was the ruling god of Egypt at that time. So therefore, the Hebrews, or whoever the foreigners were who left Egypt, associated everything wicked, evil, diabolical, depraved, with the major lord of the Egyptians, okay. who was set are now. You, are, are, you, are you saying then that, in fact, that's not true? It wasn't no, negative? No, it was true. It was true. Yes, I, all well, I want to point out true. is this one etymological fact of the confusion of Satan and Seth. The fact that Seth was in power then that everything negative um, perceived with Egypt came from the ruling God set at that but, but, time. But Zenith, he's the Lord of darkness. 
Precisely. He, 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 no, he, he is the one to whom you but this is turn for to perform Satan. black magic. I mean, you what understand. we're talking about is where the term the chicken Okay, I, I understand all Satan of that, but we're talking about from. darkness the and Lord. black magic. And you admit you practice black magic. Yes, I'm a black magician. Of okay, course. so you have to understand that from our perspective, we're saying, bro, wait a minute. This is evil. This is bad. This is wrong. Where, explain to me how the tables are getting turned. How do you take all this negativism and turn it into something that you want to devote your lives to follow? The Lord of Darkness, the Prince of Darkness, the earliest manifestation of that entity or God that has shown up in so many cultures and religions was not considered a negative force in ancient Chem or Egypt. He was the Lord of Darkness in the sense of spiritual darkness, of the night sky, of literal darkness. There was no implication of evil or moral turpitude until much later in ancient Egyptian culture when the myth of Osiris came in, when I'm sure you're familiar with yeah. that. Judeo-Christian morality has a different conception of moral behavior and of ethics than ancient Egyptian, Roman, Greek, etc. had. So it's a question of moral relativism. It's a question for you of moral relativism. No, no, not completely, because if, if I consider, if I look at the Bible, which I do whenever I'm staying in a hotel, I'll look through the Gideon Bible. God bless those Gideons! But Amen. there wasn't one in ours. But there wasn't one in ours here. What? Nope. There wasn't, there wasn't one? No. Nope. We will make sure to it. <laughs> Somebody in this church rustle me up a Bible before they get out of this building tonight. They're going back to the room with a Bible, okay? Make sure. All right, okay. Yes. I, I well, to bring it up to date, I okay. think uh, you, you say, well, how can you reconcile some, uh, taking something that's so evil and so dark and turning around into something good? To bring it into a modern context, you have to understand that this is all relative. It's something evil and dark to you and all of you because of your particular perspective that based on your particular religious belief system, this would be evil to you. But based on our particular religious belief system, this isn't at all evil to us. We do, we black, do. Doing black magic? No, it's not at all evil to you, us. You do spell I wouldn't it. recommend it. I, I, I'd have to say here and now. What? This is... That to work with these forces is a very precarious thing that you I would not... say that again. ...that I would not recommend. I don't recommend well, it either. Would, well, we would agree with you on that point. We don't proselytize. We are not trying to convert others. Black magic is probably the most dangerous undertaking a human being Amen. could work Amen. But, and, but, but... And, and, and I'm not... Wait, wait, wait telling these people Nick, here to experiment with it. You're telling me it's black magic is dangerous. Extremely dangerous. Not only is it extremely dangerous, and not only would we say, obviously the people here tonight wouldn't tamper with it or but play you do. with it. We I do. do because I am. It's a difference. I would not. I would even go so far as to say, people who just dabble in it or experiment with it without fully understanding what they're getting into are really do doing themselves in. It will come back to them in a very negative what, way. Are you saying there are demons that could get them? No. You, you no. do believe in evil See, forces, me, evil I entities. Can I, 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 no, you do believe in evil entities. Well, you're, you're using no, the no. words See, here again, I don't believe in e evil entities. I believe that through one's own abuse, use and abuse, abuse of such forces, that is what will do them in. Okay, let me Their just... Own let, abuse let, no, let me sidetrack for a minute here, because okay. I want to make sure, sure we have something clear, too. Sure. You have something called the Werewolf Order right. and Radio Werewolf. Right. Mm. And the Werewolf Order is an organization that the two of you have founded and head up, correct? It's, it's really an anti-organization. Yeah, it, well, it says here... You can, you can, it's a, a sorcerer's circle of thought, a state of mind accessible only by an inherent rapport with the mysterious, unnameable multiplicity of forces that form the nexus of the movement. I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> what that tells me is this is sorcery conjuring demons 
You, you would think so. I, I certainly would yeah. think so, especially when right on the front of here it says the arsenal for cultural terrorism. Yes, that's the most important. You are a cultural terrorist. I am. And, 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 and in your organization, you have produced some materials, including here, and you advertise this quite heavily, a Charlie Manson video. Yes. You met Charlie in prison, I, yeah, I, interviewed him, and you I, have a video you've done about him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, it's part of the left-hand path philosophy and development to look at corners of reality that frighten most people. Most of us would like to put those corners in a corner very far away and keep and the door locked forever. That's true. And people who do that, who lock the hidden corners, the fearful things away, they very often overcome them. We suggest but what do you want? You want Charlie out serving hamburgers at Burger King? I don't think no, you'd order one. I, I do not, in fact. You want Charlie behind bars? I do. How about Charlie dead? Executed? That's, that's just a legal question. What I do you want to do with I, Charlie? I don't think we should get into a judicial matter. My point is we look at and we study dangerous phenomena to incorporate that into ourselves and to learn more about our own being. But why would Any, you and, and that's, why, that's, Zina, tell me. Uh, see, the whole thing is you people seem to be fascinated with evil, with the bizarre, no, 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 with the it's dangerous. Not fascinated with evil. Well, why Charlie? Because Charlie's not a nice guy. We're Charlie's fascinated a murderer. With He's a drug knowledge. freak. Okay. We're fascinated with knowledge. We're fascinated with enlightenment. And to study an individual. Charlie is which well, 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 enlightenment? Yes, definitely. To study an individual as Charles Manson will teach you more about human nature, more about mental illness. We do not. Then you should know we're not saying to deal with any number of it, people. What, what you're suggesting is if we're a historian to look at topics in history that were unpleasant, that that historian is evil. Charles Manson is only one example. There are so many others, but he's just one okay. example. Le lycanthropy and real werewolves. werewolves. Are there real werewolves? Are, are, you you, are you a werewolf? Everyone involved in the werewolf order considers themselves to be a werewolf. Now let me make the point, that doesn't mean the Hollywood horror movie idea of a werewolf. We mean a black magician who can transform themselves at will into other states of being using sorcery. Wait, wait, wait. You believe in transforming yourself into other states of being using sorcery. Which is a fairly good explanation of what the black magical quest is. Attaining mastery over the self to the degree that one can change oneself internally and make changes in the universe. Now, what is all of this going to get you in eternity? What's going to happen to you when you die, Zena? What do you believe? Well, that's a very good question. Definitely immortality is a topic of our concern. Were I to have a glib, pat answer for you, I don't think that you would don't be know. fair. You don't know what's going to happen to you when you die? Well, it may surprise you to see we that... We don't have a, such a... You don't know? Let me, let me put it this way. The Temple of Set, probably one of its primary concerns is understanding how the mortal psyche may become immortal. But you don't know. You're we still looking for the answer. We don't claim to know a dogmatic and final answer. Would you kind of like to know? I mean, I know. Right, the right-hand path is about saying, I know everything. I know it. I read it in a book. I heard it from a god. I know everything. The left-hand path... I've got it here. Well, but where did you hear it from? The Holy Spirit. Okay. Somebody told you. We need to know for ourselves. Well, how are you going to find out? You're going to get it from a book. You're going to get it from no, some kind of an experience. No, we don't, no, we we don't have... We get it from our self-experience. From our self-development. Okay. All right, let, let's take another step here. And we're talking about the Temple of Set, but we haven't really acquainted these people with what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Now, you're claiming some historical relevance to the Temple of Set. The fact is the Michael Aquino who started what is known in modern parlance as the Temple of Set, was an associate of Anton LaVey in the Church of Satan, that there was a split between the two. He went off, he started the Temple of Set. Michael, right? Michael A. Aquino was the highest initiate in the Church of Satan in 1975. And he had an experience. He met Set in the middle of the night, 
set, dictated this book to him, well, right? Well, like Michael Aquino performed an act of black magic in which he had the experience of receiving a book that he calls the Book of Coming Forth by Night. And that book was a recording of a ritual which began the Temple of Set. But did this being, Set, appear to him? Manifest he, itself? Set spoke through Michael Aquino. Set spoke Aquino. through him. Mm -hmm. So he performed which a ritual. Is, which is the to us, he performed a ritual. He got a demon. This demon started talking out of his body. He wrote a book and he said, Goodbye, Anton. I'm starting my own thing. And he goes over here and boom, we get the Temple of Set. Well, I mean, that's, that's sort that's, of my way of putting it. Well, your way of putting it is extremely crude and simplistic, but there, there are more details to it. Okay, so he goes over and he says, That's it. I have nothing to do with the Church of Satan. I am starting the Temple of Set. And then shortly thereafter, you two came along, and you joined the Temple of Set. Well, not shortly thereafter. Right at that it's time. A good, well, the Temple of no, Set. No, that was in 1975, a good uh, 20 years. So he'd been going at it some time before the two of you came along and decided you were yes. going to join him. Right. What then, may I ask, caused you to say, we're leaving the Church of Satan, we're joining the Temple of Set? My understanding is that you considered the Church of Satan to be nothing more than atheistic psychodrama and that the real thing was in the Temple of Seth. That I that's, would agree with you. Is, is that fair? Yes. Yes. So you left your background, heritage, upbringing, all of this, and you had your own exodus to the Temple of Seth. Mm -hmm. What did the Temple of Seth do for you that the Church of Satan didn't? Well, what I found with the Temple of Seth was not only the religious purity that was simply not there in the Church of Satan, which you have a furrowed brow, I don't know. Well, what, you, what you use the word purity, <laughs> worse than... We have our own version of religious purity. Uh, when you mentioned the Ch Church of Satan was dressed up atheism, that's basically all that I grew to understand it to be, although I always wanted it to be more, I always expected it to be more, I always strived to make it more. So the Church of so, Satan wasn't satanic enough for you. It wasn't setting enough for you. It wasn't devilish enough for you. You could put it that way. Okay. Um, what the Temple of Set has is a means by which to measure your magical successes against others. You have a frame of reference. You have other magicians you can interact and work with. You have councils that have a sort of quality check to make sure nobody's getting too out of line. Have you... There, let me finish, too. It is far from a personality cult, as the Church of Satan has been known to be, because the Temple of Set has had three different... has elected three different high priests at various times. Have you... I want to know, have you met Set? Experienced, I have felt. Experience. Have you been like doing a ritual That's and you have felt the absolutely. presence of Set? I did just two weeks ago in Munich. You were in Munich. Yes. What'd you, what What did you do? May I ask? I can't tell you exactly what I did, but there was an extremely powerful working, where I and about fifteen other initiates invoked the spirit of Set, and it was incredibly powerful. I can't go into the details. Made set made absolutely. his presence. Set appeared. How? Tell me what you made can tell me. Known. He made his presence known. You felt him? Yes. He was there, yes. Were you there too? Yes. You felt him too? Yes. Did he say anything to you? Not in the, not in the sense of um, Spoken Jehovah word. speaking But did he sort of telepathically his, his or presence, you, you intuitively could, you could communicate that, to you? Did he, what did he tell we you? We feel that the presence of the Prince of Darkness is a part of us, and he speaks to us through many means. The, Not uh, all of which do we claim to say understand. Say anything about me? All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but good things. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet, I'll bet. So you came, you came away from this experience with Seth feeling more empowered? Yes, we could say that. If I asked either of you from my perspective, understanding my language and terminology, please bear with me, do you have demons? 
Do I you would, have demons? Well, I want to answer that in two ways, and I'll try to make no, it No, from my perspective. The word, the word demon comes from a Greek word, daemon, yes. which simply, simply means genius or informing spirit, informing intelligence. There's nothing about the word demon if we look at its true roots as a word that indicates this Christian concept of a okay, possessing but, 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 but evil But you understand, being. I'm not talking about, it, about the grammar. I'm talking about like what this well, book a, talks about. A daemon, in the sense of a, a wonderful, inspiring intelligence, as Plato referred to and Socrates, yes, the... Is this a hard question to answer? No, and not at all. Do you have demons? Say, have you conjured too, demons? Have I you felt demons? You, I think we don't. many people tend to think that we have demons like the Catholic Church has saints, or that we, that demons hold these demigod places for us, and it's not like that at all. I still have got an answer to the question. We, okay. We, no, no, you, you, using it, you have felt the presence of Seth. You've mm -hmm. certainly done rituals in which you've called on various forces of darkness to imbue you, right. to take control of you, or no, to no. assist you. No, no, you. not to take control of me. Ah, you don't even, like the word control. Not even, not even necessarily to assist to me. To guide you, to, to, to help you do curses, spells. Come forth, whoever, as we, we look zapping, at, you know, that as, sort of thing. As black, magicians, as black magicians, we look upon the powers of darkness as our friends, as peers. We do not worship them. They don't control us. Nor, you don't nor, think they control no, you. No, no. Nor do we view them as being particularly interested with our outcome. But as if, your Jehovah would What be. if you're wrong? I mean, what have I lost by, by loving people, by helping humanity, okay, look, by well, seeking to... Wait, 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 wait. I lost by living by my own code of morals by my own standards that I understand to be right and true for well, me. Well, if there's a heaven set, or a hell and setian, you end up in hell, you have now, lost it all. Now, your question is a loaded one. Setians, Absolutely. Setians have love. Setians have compassion. Setians have all of the qualities that are considered to be good things in Judeo-Christian. Where, where is a setian home for the destitute and dying like Mother Teresa had? Where we, is a setian well, hospital? Where is a setian, a setian a home for the, the, the homeless? That's the issue of altruism. We certainly... You don't believe in altruism? No. I have nothing against acts of charity and altruism. You just don't want to I, I am not interested in doing it. It's not part of my spiritual path. I don't condemn them, but my spiritual path, which is the way of the Prince of Darkness is my primary concern is the development and empowerment of myself, not of others. But, but don't you get it? Don't you get it? That's the whole point. The Prince of Darkness focuses you on you. That's exactly the Lord, the Lord of glory of Calvary focuses us on others. I mean, that's the whole point. Right. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. I, 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 I. I mean, this is what, Lu this is what Lucifer did in the beginning yes, when he right, rebelled right, against right, God. Right. You're saying that's okay? Yes, so, yes. But he lost, he got kicked out of heaven. He was considered a carcass, rotten, an abominable branch. Well, You're on the losing side. But, Your buddy got booted. I mean, that's the bottom line. In your book. Yeah. Look, Bob, you are... You are making an intellectual mistake here by basing all opinions that you utter on one book. Yes. Well. But it's not the only book. It, it's not the only way. No, no wait. You're, you're accusing me so of So you're saying you have the only way. Uh, no. We don't discredit anybody else's beliefs for themselves. We don't we agree with say them. We don't agree with them, certainly, but we, don't, we certainly wouldn't say, oh, we have the only one true belief. We have the only one true belief for us. Now, why isn't that good enough for you to say you have the only one you, true belief for all of you? you? Because, but there, not for, but not because, for there's, because there's a heaven and a hell, there's a to God you. and a devil, and I don't want to see you cry. So what? You if go you do know, your own thing. What, do you, would you give me a minute to say what we think will happen to you if you... Do not on the, on, remain on the right hand path. Yeah, yeah. What's going to happen to me? Your psyche, your soul, your mind, everything that you are 
will be destroyed utterly by your submission to the way of the universe. You will be, I, I will when, be destroyed. When you die, when you die, you will become nothing. Okay. Were you, were you to have a flash of revelation and suddenly practice black magic and the left-hand path, you would find the most ancient way to true immortality, which is what the left-hand path is, is all a, is about. Is this the point at which I get a left-hand path altar call? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you're really saying I've lost it too if I don't turn your way. But I just sort of we, disappear. But I'm gone. This the only isn't th our opinion. You don't uh, have to agree. We, we know we're both here because we both have radically different opinions. Let's accept that. But the difference is you want to save us from our opinion. Yes. We're willing... Oh, no, 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 no. I don't want to save you from your opinion. I want to save you from eternal damnation. Right. Not an opinion. Eternity. I really do. Did you do any ceremonies before you came here? No, absolutely no. none. Why not? Because... Oh, you're not sure? You oh, no, one. what? Before we... Uh, I just I want the like, definition... Like, like before we came here? Did you before you came here tonight? We have... You, okay. You have billed this event as a showdown with Satanism. Yeah. That's a completely one-way street. We don't have any interest in whamming you. We haven't cursed you. We don't have a problem with you. This is a healthy way to discuss ancient issues and I don't have a problem with you. It's Seth I got a problem with. Well, we, we represent Seth. We are one with Seth. But, but you, you're you, okay. You're okay. I mean, God loves you. I love you. You're human beings. You have dignity, value, and worth. It's, it's, it's the head honcho. It's, it's, it's the bad dude, you know, but the dark bad prince. the bad dude is in me. What, the, the bad, bad dude? The bad dude is here in me right now. So, so, if, you, so if you have the, something against the bad dude, you've got something against me, you see. He's there now? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Well, if you'd cooperate, I could cast him out. We completely reject this idea of possession. We, That's right, because you're not controlled, you're not possessed. We control our spiritual being. We control it. No, it's a question of manipulation. Of a question of what? Manipulation, manipulating uh, our I being. I lost your microphone, so you may need to turn it. It's a question of manipulation. Yeah. What do you mean it's a question of manipulation? You well, we do the controlling. We, we do the... I see evidence of it, so I more than think. But what if you're only just being allowed to presume for now that you are in control? For the sake of your argument, you're saying, let's say it comes down to Judgment Day, and the devil comes, takes me, and I wasn't in control after all because the no. devil is controlling me. You do understand. Okay. Okay, I'm glad. Yeah, that, for just for the sake of argument. Okay. Right. I don't okay. agree, okay. but just for the sake of argument. Fine, at least I went trying. At least in my mind, in my soul, I know I went with my intention being what I wanted it to be, so fine. Isn't that like bungee jumping off of a 50-foot tower with a 60-foot cord? <laughs> well, That's not we've, the way I see we've it. already said black magic is one of the most dangerous pursuits a human being can engage in. We accept that risk very easily. But what if, if it's an eternal risk? Well, what, what if I put it on the other side of this issue and say, what if you are throwing away your immortal psyche by following Christianity in the right-hand path, which is what we believe. So we both are at an impasse. Setianism is quite an elitist philosophy. Setianism does not welcome the masses, does not even want the masses. Um, we don't believe people can be converted. We don't want people to be converted. And as I said before, this isn't the kind of thing you should dabble in. This isn't the kind of thing that you should um, do for kicks to 
be funny at a party, nor do we believe in equality. There's absolute inequality. There's, there, the concept of equality is an outdated, very romantic idea, but it's impossible. I am not any more equal to you as you are to him in the front row. There is absolutely no such thing as equal, in, is equality, and we have to come to terms with that to understand, to understand ourselves more, which, as I said, ourselves. This sounds racist. No, I didn't say anything about race. I said you, him, and me. It has nothing to do with race. Inequality, man, woman, unequal. 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 And each, each individual is not equal to the other, which would be an insult to both of them to say you're both exactly the same. In our view, the religion of Setianism is many thousands of years older than Judeo-Christianity. It is resurfacing now in the world. In these last days. You, you can't like believe to, we're in the last days. The last days for you. Before the, the age the, of Satan. The beginning for us. Now. Well, yeah, I have partial agreement. I have partial agreement. It is getting toward the end for us and the beginning for you. You just got to understand that when it starts for you, it's not going to last long. Well, that's based on your... But you don't know that. There are extremely accomplished and powerful people in the Temple of Set. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. Accomplished and powerful. Absolutely. Brilliant. Because, because the Temple of Set is based on intellectual knowledge. Mm -hmm. The Temple of Set focuses on... Study. Being, on study, on and education. You, you, you plan on taking over? No, we don't taking plan on over. taking over. We have no, no. interest. The world is not our interest, only ourself. Probably the biggest misconception about Satanism, based again on the Bible, is that we are concerned with dominating the world, making others like us. We don't care about that whole issue. You don't care if we like you? No. How do you feel about Jesus? Well, Temple of Set has studied the idea of Jesus, the historical facts about Jesus, and many of us have come to the conclusion that if one were to analyze what a black magician is, one who goes against the social order of their time, one who breaks with conventions of morality of their time. You're not going to say what I think you're going to say. One who declares themselves not to worship a god, but to say, I am a god, is a black magician. And therefore, Many of us, and I, you heard that. I would have to thank Edred Thorson for putting this into context. You're saying Jesus, Jesus was a black magician. If one were to look at, he was a sorcerer who did things that magicians do. Well, now, wait a minute. He, wait a minute. He would, let me, when let me, any of you black magicians well, let, are willing to get crucified and rise again from the dead, I'll believe it. Well, that's the difference. Crowd. He hung out with a sinner. But not, on, not only if you really look at it because he wanted to save the sinners, yes. but because he himself was a cosmic rebel like Lucifer. So I'm saying Jesus Christ, which merely means, it was not a personal name, it means the anointed one. He yeah. declared himself a god. And the point of black magic, left-hand path, Satanism, is to make oneself a god. And he did so in an extremely powerful way. Right. I, I, I understand the thesis. It's just that none of you have ever. Aleister Crowley didn't do it. Michael Aquino hasn't done it. I don't think you've done it. You haven't raised the dead. You haven't walked on water. You haven't cleansed lepers. You haven't opened blind eyes. Then maybe. And until you do, maybe you have what, no right to say what you're maybe saying. Maybe what you're saying is Jesus was the most powerful and successful black magician to date. Or. Or, God, very God, from eternity past, who died for our sin. I'm sure you're finding this showdown with Satanism very fascinating. Isn't it interesting to see what people who worship the devil really believe? Their philosophy, what's behind, why they do what they do. It's frightening, it's disturbing.
but we need to know so that we can fight back in the name of Christ against these evil ideologies. Now, during this showdown with Satan, we went to the audience and we let them ask some questions. Did you ever denounce um, any other gods or church beliefs um, and uh, continue to worship? No. Or believe was, in one? There was no. Church? We didn't have to denounce anything, it was more an acceptance of this, this thing called Seth. And I should point out, we have been lifelong Satanists, so therefore there was no need to renounce another faith. This has always been our religion. It is now perfected in our understanding in the Temple of Seth. I mean, I was baptized at three years old as a Satanist. I was the first documented uh, case as a child baptism as a Satanist. And basically what that ceremony consisted of was a glorification of life and all of the things that bring life into being. Uh, rather than a denial or a con condemnation of the original sin. You're telling me that no blasphemies were involved, yet you do recognize that beyond what I call organized or institutional religious groups like the Church of Satan, Temple of Set, and others, there are self-styled satanic groups who call themselves Satanists there who are. do utter there blasphemies. Are. Just there are self-styled Christian groups who... We condemn would... those groups as being ignorant, not based in either historical or religious tradition, and they are anathema to us. But you've, you've been to ceremonies where nudes have been on altars. You just don't do it now. Well, I, have, I have no problem with that. I, you don't have problem with nudes on an altar, do you? Now. Absolutely not. That's, Absolutely not. That's no. not an issue. Of that's not problem. an issue. No. How about ripping up a Bible? Well, it's, it's stupid. A Desecrating okay, a cross. Let me put it this ripping way. Ripping up okay. a Bible is just let silliness. Me, let me I put mean. it this way. I don't have any belief in the Bible, so therefore it doesn't do anything for me to rip it up. It, the idea of an inverted cross, most people associate Satanists with inverted crosses. It has no psychological meaning me, to me to invert something I don't believe in anyway, so I reject all that. All right, gentleman in the front row has a question here. Yes. It's understood by all of us uh, that at some point we're going to die, and according to the a Christian tradition, we, when we die, we're going to go be with the Lord forever. Where are you going to go? We strive to create our own destiny. We don't believe in the existence of heaven or hell. Hell has no special meaning for us in the Temple of Set or in the left-hand path. We are trying to create our own existence after corporeal death to continue our power in the world but not, we don't believe we go to some metaphysical region. Uh, you talked about this entity that's decades old, and you said, how can something decades old be your peer when it knows much more than you do, and how would you know that it's given you everything no, what when I, you're still studying? Uh, what I said was the Temple of Set is decades old. Set, the Prince of, Dar the Set, the prince of Darkness, is thousands of years old, oh. earlier than man. Okay, let this gentleman ask another question. I don't agree to question is, how can you, you say in, in, in the temple of, uh, you know, um, rents of darkness and all this here, you can't find anything in darkness. If you take no light and you go in the darkness, you find nothing. Yes, you, we, you, do. you do. We find ourselves. And in the darkness, you find yourself. How can you find your yourself in the dark? Was that running into the wall? I can't see in the dark. I mean, I'm the man's making a point. You're in darkness. You don't see when you're in darkness. And my, my point and is... Some, some do. Do? Some do. See in darkness? Yes. You mean that literally? Absolutely. Oh. Could, okay. could it not be, Bob, that the light is blinding if one is looking for your inner self? The darkness is illuminating. You're looking inside you for darkness. Yes. Which is a positive value to me. To us. To you, it is positive to look inside and see darkness. Yes. Um, this is Director Dezina. Um, you said that your baptism was to celebrate life. Mm -hmm. Who do you think gave you that life? My mother and my father. She says her mother, mother and her father. My mother and my father, and furthermore, I go even further than that, and I believe that I had the isolate will and the isolate intelligence to draw my mother and father together to create myself. Wait, whoa, wait, huh? 
thereby making me a purely magical child. But, uh, you didn't hear what she's saying. Shh, what? You said you have the isolate will to draw your mother and father together to create you to make you a magical child. You're saying that before you were born, before you were conceived, That's my personal belief, okay, yes. you were some type of ethereal identity I that existed I was... in the spirit world or wherever and that you drew them together to make you so you could take life form to become a sorceress? The sorceress that I exist as today could not have happened if it weren't from the best combination of the genetic material that I had to work with of my two progenitors. So in a sense, I chose them. So you're, ex you're suggesting some type of pre-existence, spiritual yes, pre-existence. We, we, we believe that we have created ourselves and that we are developing that knowledge of our godhood further. And that process in the Temple of Set is referred to by the Egyptian word kefir which means to come into being. So if, if you're saying, are we denying that God, Jehovah, gave us life? Yes, we are. God in his word says that he is the beginning and the end. How did Set become to be? Well, we believe, just as we believe that we have created ourselves through our will, Set was the first to create himself and thus set the model for all black magicians to come, this example of through willpower, creating yourself and making yourself into a god. Well, I don't want to get real deep here, but uh, I'm not sure I understand. Set made himself into something out of nothing? Basically, yes, because that is the magical process. So you're believing then, like we believe, that Jesus Christ has the power to create out of nothing that set too has the power to create out of nothing. Well, this is getting back to the similarity between certain elements of, the, of Jesus Christ and black magical practice, in that Christ, as a magician, which he is described in the Bible, creates out of nothing. The kingdom of heaven is within him, well, what which was is there a very before, satanic what, statement. What was there before there was set? That isn't really a relevant question to... I think the a priori question of understanding no, what was it's, before it's, there was anything an is a very important philosophical and religious it's, question. It's an interesting philosophical discussion, but I don't think we have the time to answer it here. The point is, we believe that Set was the first black magician and Set the um, prototype for all black magicians to come. Yeah, I wanted to know if you drink blood at any time to gain power. Or have you ever drunk have blood ever, to gain yeah. power? Have you ever done that? No, it, it, it's not something that is prescribed in satanic ritual to drink blood. That is largely a urban legend or a myth. Oh, I but, but Satanists do. I, I deal with kids all the time. No, but that's... Okay, but so do do they that. don't. You know they you're, do. You're, they're you're, claiming Satanists. Self-styled Satanists you're talking about have basically taken your Christian negative interpretations of Satanism. And you're blaming us and for them? No, well, no, in the no, Bible I'm just it saying. says, I eat of the flesh, I drink of the blood. And so maybe some other younger children that don't necessarily understand this think, oh, I should literally eat of the flesh, drink of the blood. And so they'll drink blood. That's in not a, why they do it. You well, know, well, in well, an inversion. Okay. Blood have you ever done that? In an, have I ever done yeah. that? No, I'm talking about the people you're referring to that you We do not, say, you, you've oh, got to understand, do. we despise these self-styled Satanists who give our give you religion a bad name. A bad name. Yeah, you, you're, you people are fairly dignified compared to them. I mean, it would be they're like, wackos. It would be like you're saying, just strange. It would be like saying to you, um, if, I, if I were to judge your behavior by Jim Jones and say, well, Jim Jones does this, he was a Christian, you must be like that too. Uh, I'm puzzled because... Uh, I, I want you to explain what is the value of what you're doing. The value of what we are doing is to transform ourselves into the masters of our own destiny and self-deify ourselves, actually become a god. That, well, is, now, that, is, now. that is what we believe is the value of black magic and of our religion.
And that may be the most important thing that you've said all night. I mean, that well, may be the most that, salient point that you've made. That but but, but surely, about. sure you do understand. I mean, you have read about the serpent in the garden that that was the first lie. Well, you eat this fruit and you will be a god. Part of, part of the temple. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is no, a lie. This is that's a very good this thing. book, which is let me, irrelevant let me, to let me, it's, But it's there. Right, right. It's in the book. Right. It okay, doesn't the, matter. The, it's irrelevant the myth, to us. We can't get that through you. The garden, no, no, I understand it's irrelevant the myth, to you, but you... The myth of the Garden of Eden is not originally a Judaic or Christian myth. It comes from Babylon. Well, the Babylonian version of this very ancient myth represents Eve as being heroic for eating of the fruit of knowledge and knowledge that's is, Satan's side of the story it's about where the Babylonian myth comes from the, the snake and the serpent myth is a perversion of the original story when it actually happened as an event if you were to talk to each person here I think you'd find as many different stories as there are people they've come out of different lifestyles different experiences it seems to me that you are a product of your environment because that you followed one path your entire life. Well, we talk about individuation, and I wonder how much you have opened yourself to the possibilities of other ways. Well, that may be at, uh, at first glance, but the fact is I was not the only person that was born in the environment that I was raised in or reared in. However, I am the only individual that remains to this day as a black magician, as a sorceress, as a priestess of sept. My father, or my progenitor, I should say, was basically an atheist who liked the trappings, who played with the trappings. And that got him somewhere for a while, but in the end, he was consumed by it. My half-sister reared in the exact same environment she could be sitting in this room. She's no different than any average person walking down the street. My son, raised in the same environment, um, is just, he wants to be an everyday, everyday guy. So at first glance, it may seem like, oh, I was raised in this strange environment. How could I possibly be anything but? But the fact is, human nature being what it is, I could have rebelled and become a Jesus freak. I could have joined, I could have joined an existentialist group. But the point is, uh, through all the choices that I could have had, that I could have done, this is still where I am and this is where I intend to be for the rest of my life. So you're wanting us to know you are what you are, you are who you are, because in addition to feeling as though there were some pre-existent conditions that determine your genetics, you now, by an act of your will, decide to continue to be who you are. Correct? Right. And you're proud of it? Very proud of it. Do you consider the possibility you could change? No. What do you do during Halloween and Christmas? Halloween and Christmas. Ah. Well, <clears throat> let's try Halloween to be first. To perfectly honest, we have our own holidays that are usually of personal importance to us. So we don't necessarily take a universally accepted holiday such as Christmas and celebrate it just because it's the 25th. Do you again. give away presents at Christmas? No. Just yeah, no, absolutely not. No. We do, we do give away presents in the spirit of the winter solstice, and ah. as you know, December 25th, as the arbitrary birthday of Jesus Christ, was decided upon by the Catholic Church so that the pagans sure. could understand, you know, let's put this Jesus idea over the earlier idea. But the fact is, if we choose to celebrate his birth and recognize and commemorate it, that's fine. Yeah. But we do. Yeah. So uh, let's. Uh, what about but Halloween? Holidays in in general. Um, what Halloween? I want to know Halloween. Well, Halloween. Ha usually Halloween. We're the ones providing the entertainment for others. I would love to take a Halloween off 
and go and do something fun for ourselves. Well, what do you do? Well, usually we have performed the last radio year, for on example. Halloween. We had, we had a seance last year at Hell House of Hollywood. We all had a seance. Well, did anybody show up? Anybody I know? No one knew. Did anyone show up at the seance? Well, it was a seance to contact Alistair Crowley. Sharon did Al Al who? Sharon Tate. Sharon Tate? Mm -hmm. Did Charlie ask you to do that? No. no. Did Sharon show up? He did. Sharon showed up. And the baby? No. No, baby didn't show up. No, Charlie killed, well, his people killed Sharon Tate, the actress. So, uh, Sharon have anything interesting to say, like? No, not particularly. Uh, um, did Alistair show up? He did. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. And, and Alistair well, have anything? You know, remember the, the famous Satanist, Mr. The Beast? Well, he six, wasn't six. a Satanist. But well, okay. But he showed up, but sure. did he but just... the point is, Halloween... Sort of say, like, I wish I hadn't done all those drugs and killed myself, and... No, the, my, the point is about Halloween. You know, when it's Easter, I'm sure you have plenty of work to do. When it's oh, Halloween. I'm busy at Easter. Right, right, and I'm right. even busier at Halloween. Right, right. well. <laughs> it's my busiest time of the year. Gentlemen over there, yeah. I'm used to hear that people who don't practice what you believe, when they die, they just are nothing. Is that correct? Basically, yeah. Okay. Um, one of us is right and one of us is wrong. There is a truth here. Mm -hmm. And my belief is that if you don't follow Jesus Christ, you will go to hell. You will burn forever. You will feel it. It will be very real. Right. We are and aware if, of that. If, if you're right, if your religion is the truth, I'll take the risk of being wrong. Well, that's exactly If your religion, if my religion is true, are you willing to take the risk of being wrong and burning in hell forever? I said I am more than willing to take that risk. And if this tyrant, this Jehovah, exists... Tyrant? ...that your Bible describes, I would rather... I would have to be against him if he existed. I don't believe he exists. So, yes, I would take that chance What you gladly. call tyranny is your choice, sir. You blame God for something that you freely choose to do. We heard Zena a moment ago no, say, no. I am what I am, I'm proud to be what I am, and I always will be what I am. Right, but, but, it, but that exertion of her will, if it then leads to eternal perdition, is certainly not God's fault. If I'm, she burns I'm not, in no. hell, she's made the choice, right, no, Zena? We, what I'm, I'm, That's what he was on the about. contrary, I'm saying I take complete responsibility for my decision to be what I am spiritually, and I accept the consequences completely, understanding I don't believe at all in the Judeo-Christian mythology of heaven and hell and sin. And as I've said, I'm sure you mean well in your harping on this theme, but it doesn't affect me. Well, it could affect you for all of eternity, and the risk that you're willing to take but is really a very hollow assertion But again, in, in lieu of the fact you're talking about something that you can't even begin to comprehend. But I'm saying, if you continue on the right-hand path, you, you explained earlier how Buddhism and Hinduism lead to dissolution into nothingness. As far as I can see in Christianity, it shares that same idea of, your idea of heaven is to no longer be Oh, not but quite the contrary. Subsumed. No, we, the scripture says we will be known as we are known. I expect to be a recognizable identity to have a glorified risen body. Well, then yeah, it'll have some improvements, but uh, it, it, it'll be, you know, it'll be a heavenly body, but I will have it. I will know I'm going to, well, you know, know my loved ones who have gone on before me and others. I, I think this is a dead end. I believe in my concept of immortality. You believe in yours. And though what you heard may have been a little frightening and even a little shocking. I want you to remember this. No matter what the devil says or does, he has been defeated in the name of Jesus.